Hello, everybody. Gary Laubach. I am behind the mic, but I'm behind the mic, not for football, not for men's basketball, but for women's basketball. As I sit here with Kia Damon Olson heading into her seventh season as the Lafayette head coach. And it won't be long before they're on the hardwood taking on Syracuse on November 7th. Kia, you lost one player to graduation last year, Jess Booth. Uh, certainly a tough loss, but Jess was injured most of the final half season. So therefore, you've got almost everybody back. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, with Jess going out, um, we lost her leadership, um, but it created an opportunity for the younger kids to probably gain more playing time um, than would have otherwise uh -huh, happened. Uh -huh. And uh, to their credit, I think they capitalized on those opportunities and it just kind of whet their appetite a little bit for what college basketball could be like and what their contributions could be like. And I thought that was a really good springboard into um our spring training season. Who has filled the leadership void left by Jess? You know what? It's more of a by committee co approach. Oh, um, what we started to see last year was, you know, players like Abby Antagnoli step forward and, and lead more vocally. Um, Michaela Andrews has always been a young lady who could lead by example with her work mm -hmm. ethic and mm -hmm. things of that nature. And now she's adding voice, you know, to that. You know, Kayla Drummond is somebody who may be a little bit more behind the scenes, um, does a lot with leadership and moving things um, along. And then we have the rest of our, you know, our leadership council who is, you know, um, Haley Smith is someone that we count on for some leadership. Um, Emma Shields and even one of our first years, Grace Montgomery. So, you know, we have a pretty healthy contingent of young women who want to be leaders, who want to move the program forward and who, who want to, you know, create that championship environment that all of Lafayette is, you know, going after in their respective seasons. The real positive, as I looked at the roster, is that the roster is large. You've got a little bit of depth, something you did not have last year due because of injuries. Nine players back. I looked at the nine. Every one of them has quite a bit of playing experience. So maybe you don't have to start from square one and practice one. These girls pretty much know what to do. Now it's a matter of getting everybody to play together. Yeah, you know, that that's definitely a luxury um, that they're familiar with how we do things and how we want to do things. And they're able to pass that down um, to the new players coming in so that they can get acclimated more quickly. But just with having the um, most of the team here over the summer, you know, that allowed us to get some things in. So informationally, content wise, I feel like we're light years ahead of where we were last year at this time. We've been able to play more in our practices, whether it be against one another or whether whether against the practice guys, which, you know, it wasn't very many times where I could go five on five last year. So um, in the early parts of the season, especially. So we're definitely um, ahead um, than we when we were this year at this point last year. Sorry. Um, and, I, and I like it. I like what I'm seeing from the group. Um, I like their energy daily. I like their desire to learn um, when you have those two things present. You know, you have a chance to, to build and move forward. When I list the names for you, if you're familiar with Lafayette women's basketball, these names are all familiar. Abby Antignoli, Michaela Andrews, Haley Smith, Kylie Favors, Salda Najanaya Gizi, Kay Donahue, Kayla Drummond, Emma Shields, Anaya Matthews. I would assume Abby is probably the motivational leader, inspirational leader of this ball club. But this is a team that didn't seem to really need anybody to push them. They could push themselves pretty well. Yeah, no, they, they definitely have a, a competitive edge, you know, as, as you'll hear a lot of coaches talk about. Um, and Abby is the spirit behind that, you know, for sure. But each of those players you name can hold their own. Um, and we've seen lots of growth from, you know, I didn't mention Kylie Favors earlier, but she's a young lady that has made a pretty consistent leap forward and willing to take on more roles for the team. And so I'm just excited for that, to see their complete growth and evolution in terms of what they can be individually this year, as well as mm -hmm. collectively. Speaking of evolution, who who came back as maybe the most improved player from last year? Um, most improved, I would probably say Kay Donahue to date. Mm -hmm. um, she's really uh, embraced some things. Um, she has a, a really high work ethic and a competitive spirit that I absolutely love. And if she sees this, yes, I love your competitive spirit. Um, <laughs> but it drives her, and it drives her in a way that I think is inspirational um, to a number of kids. But, you know, she's had a really good off season. Um, I think 
Sada has had a really good off season. I think it's been nice to see Emma mm -hmm. kind of battle back from, you know, the things that plagued her last year. Um, Kylie's done a very good job. So we have a number of people um, who have made improvement from the end of last season to now. And a really good mix of inside outside players. Have you found yourself a three point shooter? Have you found yourself uh, a couple of outstanding rebounders? Well, I would say this, we have several, you know, three point shooters and in which I think that's the, growth that we've been kind of hunting, not having one or two, but you can point to five or six, oh, which is, it's different. Mm -hmm. um, and inside, we're still kind of hunting some of that consistency, but you know, Kayla is definitely out front with that. And I think for the others, it's just more time um, and time that they'll get in practice, time that they'll get in the preseason. And by conference time, I'm hoping that that when you pose that question, it can be followed up with, yes, Kayla and mm -hmm. this person, this mm -hmm. person, and that person is kind of filled in as well. All right, let's talk about some of the new faces that none of us are really familiar with yet. We will, of course, be familiar with them. Bryn Beefert, uh, a six-one guard, had a great or, or forward yep. had a great uh, high school career, uh, averaged double double mm -hmm. points and rebounds. Grace Montgomery, out of Melbourne, Australia, maybe the most interesting player to watch this year. Tasha Chudy, uh, she averaged twenty two points a ball game in high school, ten point three rebounds. Teresa Kiwat, uh, five ten, out of Minnesota. Uh, it's an interesting mix of players inside outside. Uh, have they been impressive so far? You know what? It's interesting. Um, I was just having a conversation with one of the freshmen um, yesterday and, and some of their parents just to let them know, like, as coaches, we expect the freshman year to be up and down. Like, they're learning lots of new things, doing things differently, um, and just the volume of information, the speed in which it happens, and that's a real adjustment. And for a lot of them, they're not used to – They have e they've had easier transitions. Of course. Um, and so dealing with the up and downs of that emotionally and showing up the next day as if it didn't occur, you know, is a maturity thing. And that's where, you know, most of them are on a day to day basis. But are they where that we thought that they would be? Absolutely. Um, and will we see some of them contributing? Absolutely. Um, and so now it's just a point of step by step. Can we grow that a little bit more each day? Yeah, and then you tack on the rigors of the academic demands here at Lafayette uh, for freshmen makes it even that much more difficult. Non-conference games, they have to be a little bit excited or a lot really excited about going to Syracuse, going to Rutgers, and then, of course, the big trip to Notre Dame. And uh, we'll finally get Notre Dame here next year. Yeah, yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, you know, the delay with, you know, having to cancel the game with COVID with mm -hmm. Notre Dame. Um knowing that there was a lot of fanfare and excitement about that game. And so it's continuing on when we go to South Bend, but just knowing that the following year they'll be back here, um, that will be fun. And that gives us even more time to, you know, as a community to come together and, and, and really take in that environment. Your staff, for the most part, all back. Yeah, no, we had one staff transition, but that uh, transition allowed me to LFA John mm -hmm. Hannafin as a full time mm -hmm. assistant coach. And, you know, he's been great in terms of just kind of building on year one, taking on the extra responsibilities. Um, and we always have our tried and true. You know, Tom is Mr. <laughs> consistent um, and, and, and we're like yin and yang. And so, you know, he's the good cop. Sometimes I'm the bad cop and vice versa. And just send a steady Eddie. So, you know, we have a really good complement of personalities and experience levels, you know, in our coaching staff. But, you know, it's made all of this fun. I can't wait to get behind the mic watching women's basketball on ESPN+. Plus. Every one of the home games will be able to be seen at some point somewhere, primarily on ESPN+. Plus. Kia, I wish you the very best. Let's get rolling. Let's get into the Kirby Sports Center for some good women's basketball. This has been Behind the Mic. I'm Gary Laubach.